Well, artificial intelligence is infiltrating most industries, of course, particularly though the healthcare sector. According to the CSIRO, there has been a surge of AI being used from clinical decision making to administrative tasks as well. Joining me live is Research Director of CSIRO's Australian eHealth Research Centre, Dr David Hanson. Doctor, thank you for your time today. AI integration thank is, you. of course, inevitable, but this could mean the difference between life and death, right? Uh, th there's clearly going to be a lot of AI used in healthcare in the future, and it's going to make a huge difference both to uh, the sustainability and efficiency of our healthcare system, as well as um, to supporting decision making uh, for healthcare and clinical decisions. Maybe give us a little bit more detail on exactly how this could impact diagnosis, um, also prevention, I guess, um, treatment, and the medical era ahead too. Yeah, so lots, lots of. Um, Lots of lots of use cases to talk about, uh, and and that's why we've released our report. So uh, importantly, our report provides a bit of a primer to exactly what artificial intelligence is. Uh, over the last twelve months, with uh, ChatGPT and everyone using uh, large language models for for those sort of um, language. Um, decisions and language uh, processes, um, it, there's kind of been a feeling that this AI area is all brand new. What we've tried to show in our report, in fact, is that AI is a really old, uh, well, a, a old technology. It's been around for 60 or 70 years. Um, but what we're seeing is a large amount of data and compute, making it really amazing to do, uh, really po possible to do amazing things with that data using artificial intelligence algorithms. So um, uh, as well as the primer, we go into a, a number of use cases for where we're using, um, where we are involved in building algorithms that support healthcare. So things like identification of variants in the SARS-COVID uh, um, uh, genomic uh, makeup, uh, we're involved in some of that work, which actually supported some of the vaccine work. Uh, we're talking about antimicrobial resistance, where we're collecting lots of data across the healthcare system and needing to identify uh, which antibiotics work on which bacteria. Uh, and so, um, you know, a, a lot of AI around that. Uh, cancer diagnosis is going to be a big one, and you're showing some images there. Um, you know, I was talking to a clinician the other day who, who reviews a lot of breast cancer. Um, images and he's using an A-bot, AI uh, I bot to support him in that and it's making him actually feel a lot more confident in his decision making without having to re review it four or five times just to make sure he hasn't missed anything. So there's actually lots of use cases right across healthcare. Mm, helping it to become a little bit more efficient as well and also I guess mm -hmm. from the administrative point of view as well allowing Aussies to have greater control over their health data too. Um, with the good though it's important to know it sometimes comes concern and there has been a lot of concern around the potential power of AI not just in the healthcare sector but all sectors. Um, talk to us a little sure. bit about how the healthcare sector will mitigate those concerns. Yeah, so we've been working with a coalition across uh, across healthcare in Australia, uh, the Australian AI Alliance for AI and Healthcare, and we released a roadmap last year which actually addressed some of these issues. So things like consent and making sure that we're actually informing both clinicians and patients over how their data is being used uh, and whether AI algorithms are involved and what sort of processes uh, are in place for that. Uh, the Therapeutic Goods Association is really working with industry to make sure that uh, those AI algorithms which would classify as software as a medical device are getting proper regulatory uh, uh, approval and there's, there's, they're putting in some really great processes to support the introduction or the, the safe introduction of AI into healthcare. And then we also want to make sure we're doing um, post-market surveillance, if you like, where once an AI is being used, we are capturing when something goes wrong and we're able to both um, inform the public or, or inform uh, affected patients and clinicians, but more importantly, learn from that and make sure we're improving our processes all the time. Okay, Dr. David Hanson, thank you for your time today. Thank you.